All right, now we're recording. So I put things in a little bit of context in terms of uh, our presentation of uh, the, the prayers used on Shabbat morning. And uh, we started a while ago with Modet Ani, thanking God for returning our soul. This was like a little review, which I'm repeating now. <laughs> um, and um, so we thank God for returning our soul from where it goes to some of the higher levels of our soul at night to learn. And we learn through the dream state and we connect with our higher selves. When we return, there's no guarantee that our soul is going to come back into the body. When it does, we're, we thank God for that in the morning. And then it was typical as we got ready for our day, historically, um, we did the morning blessings. But um, as I'm going to show, as it evolved, the morning blessings uh, became part of the preliminary shacharit service in the morning, um, said in shul. It certainly does that on Shabbat. Um, and a lot of communities that have a daily minion might do it as, as part of the shacharit service. But And a lot of people, I think, uh, even in Jewish renewal, when we really look at some of our wonderful tradition, we're going back and we're, we're reinvigorating um, a lot of the traditions that um, have, um, as Reb Zaman would say, have gotten a little freeze-dried, a little stale over the years. Um, so I, I'm going to be putting up uh, a number of different uh, uh, morning blessings from a number of different prayer books. And we're going to look at some of the language that was used and how it evolved. Uh, you know, of course, the first one's going to be very patriarchal and masculine. And uh, it's only going to be in um, uh, male Hebrew and so on. And it's going to have a lot of medieval language, the Lord and the King and, and, and that language that many of us grew up with. And then it, it sort of it sort of morphs a little bit and the language created by some of the uh, I'll show I'll, I'll do two by Reb Zalman, but others in some of the poetry is just amazing. I'll put up the Marsha Prager prayer book, which some of you know about and some other examples. And then we're going to choose one and um, we're going to go through hopefully between tonight and next week. It'll be a continuation because I really didn't want to cram all of the blessings into um, the hour and 15 minutes. That just wouldn't do justice um, to really understanding and using um, the blessings. And then I would like us to learn some choreographed movements that go with the morning blessings. Um, the first one I learned specifically, I learned from Reb Zalman, and then um, other Peneor people um, have uh, done some other creative ones. And there's one I'm going to say for last by Shefa Gold, which is marvelous, marvelous chant to the morning blessings. Um, I, I, uh, we'll, we'll be able to stand and do it. And those of you who would rather sit, we can, you can do it sitting down as well. So I'll offer, I'll offer those options. Anyway, uh, back to the morning blessings, you know, they became, um, as uh, a Jewish person woke up, the morning blessings would follow the wake up, the, the ritual washing of the hands, the um, getting dressed, blessings for getting dressed, for using the bathroom, um, thanking God for my body that works properly. And then goes on to thanking God for a lot of the things that we have, uh, the miracles all around us. Um, I really like what uh, Rabbi Mark has done. He starts off with some of the traditional morning blessings, and then he asks the congregation um, who has something special to share, some gratitude on a personal level. I would like us to learn at least a sample of the traditional ones. And um, perhaps if you, you like those, you could add them to your own personal repertoire 
in your own prayer and meditation life. Um, so let's see. A few things just in general. Kavana. That's our inner intention. And um, I learned a lot about Kavana in praying from Reb Zalman. A lot of the material I'm, I'm using is taken from his book on davening. Um, uh, he called it davenology, sort of an experimental praying, davenology. And then he has a second book about davening uh, in English. And so he has some wonderful translations of uh, these blessings as well as the whole service. Um, but those books are, are really good resources. So back to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh is really, uh, I would say, using the four worlds to make the prayers come alive. I use freeze dried. Uh, Reb Zalman said you have to add the nutrients, the water, the prayers have become freeze dried. We have to make them come alive again because they're not meant to be just read. You know, they're meant to do something in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, and in our bodies. Our bodies want to daven just as much as our minds and our hearts want to daven. So um, four worlds. Uh, if anybody asks me, what was the most important thing that Reb Zalman taught? I would say four worlds mentality. I, in, in fact, just about everything in my life, I break down to, to that system of understanding life. Um, and I just think it's amazing. And it's not just Jewish tradition. Um, many, uh, you know, the base of just about all of the, I'll say, mystical traditions, you know, they're really coming up to the same mountain. And um, so we're saying the same thing in, in, in different languages. All right. So um, to get us into the framework of the four worlds, a quick review. Asiya is the world of the physical, the world of the body, the world of action. It's this plain, physical plane of existence. And as I said, we're going to wake up the body. Um, the world of Yitzira is the world of the heart. Um, and prayer, meditation is meant to open our hearts. Bariya, the mind, intellectual remembrance, um, all the things the mind can do, creativity. And then Atsilu is the, we'll say, the spiritual, the soul level. So um, the niggin I was just singing, there are words to it. So to really get us going in terms of that four words, four worlds mentality, before we start breaking down all the blessings, let's sing a little. So Deborah, would you put that um, number nine up, please? And um, I'll match the words with the music. Uh, that's not it. It was the song that I, uh, the one that was after that. That was number 10 on my list. The one before it. Not working. Oh, there it goes. Ah, here we go. So uh, these were some chants of Reb Zalman's I used in a in a workshop at one of the Saging International conferences. I did a um, I did a little workshop on um, Reb Zal uh, was on Reb Zalman, <laughs> and uh, these are some of his chants. Number four. 
So the niggin goes, Use uh, any, uh, I'm using ya, the breath of life, in this particular chant. Um, but if another name of God speaks to you, feel free to use it. Ya, I want to do for you. Ya, I want to feel for you. Ya, I want to know for you. Ya, I want to be for you. You are action. You are feeling. You are knowing. You are being. You are action. You are feeling. You are knowing. You just are. Now notice, I want to do for you. The doing is the world of Asiya. Feeling, knowing, and just being, you just are, is Atsilut. So, let's sing it a few times. Ya, I want to do for you. Ya, I want to feel for you. Ya, I want to know for you. Ya, I want to be for you. You are action, you are feeling, you are knowing, you are being. You are action, you are feeling, you are knowing, you just are. One more time. Ya, I want to do for you. Ya, I want to feel for you. Ya, I want to know for you. Ya, I want to be for you. You are action. You are feeling. You are knowing. You are being. You are action. You are feeling. You are knowing. You just are. And I can't wait till we can all sing together because it sounds so much nicer than just one voice. Actually, we're singing duet. We're singing mini duets. <laughs> Me and each one of you at home. Um, so, um, Deborah, if you can put up now um, number one on the screen share is going to be taken from. Um, it was funny when we when we when the Marx Brothers when we did our first gig, um, um, Rabbi Mark and I discovered that we both grew up with the same sidur, the Silverman sidur, uh, conservative sidur. So I figured I'd put that up, and um, and just we'll just look at the language that a lot of us grew up with, in terms of that. Now, um, is there a way to make it a little bigger? Ah, nice. Um, now, for my use, I have a hard copy because I'm going to be talking from it. It's a little bit bigger for me here. But um, we'll also notice that a lot of uh, different authors in our Sidurs have taken a lot of creative liberty. And um, some of these prayers have been added or subtracted over the years. Now, I also said that... Um, the prayers, a lot of these were meant to say at home and became part of the service. Now, um, I was learning and I was reading up on, about the morning blessings. I read that um, that in, not in these particular, or, or, but in a lot of the overall blessings themselves, when you look at um, some of the others that we'll look at, some of them were taken right from the Tanakh and some were taken from the Talmud because um, uh, that was keeping up with the Halakha was for uh, saying that we have a duty to engage in Torah study daily and doing the morning blessings fulfilled some of that requirement at the time. So, um, and then uh, throughout, j just like 
our entire Sidur, it has evolved. It became an anthology, a whole bunch of things added. It's, it's hard to turn the pages of a Sidur and realize that, oh, this is from the 5th century, the next page. Oh, that's from the 19th century. And then you, you turn and it goes all over the place. It's, you know, it's, a, it's so rich with thousands of years of, of, of rich, rich language. Um, so uh, I'm just going to go through a little bit, just to look at the language. Um, Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who hast given the mind understanding to distinguish between day and night. In some prayer books, you see um, that first one really talks about the rooster crowing at daybreak or the rooster having the understanding, um, which is symbolic of really creation waking up. Um, we have an inner understanding. Um, again, why does a rooster know to crow? Why does you know why do fl certain flowers open up? You know they have an inner understanding. So, it, an, an under a, given the mind, the understanding doesn't necessarily mean the literal. And so, uh, as we start examining um, the different blessings of the morning. Um, we'll, we'll each have a turn to share uh, what our interpretation of it, and then I'll share a few things that I've learned. Um, would you uh, put up number two next, Debbie? I'm sorry, it's going to take a minute. It's just not opening. Oh, okay. Well, uh, you try to open them on, and I'll, I'll just punt a little bit and we'll come back. Okay. So they don't have to have dead space. Yeah. Um, let's see. Before, oh, okay. I'd like each one of you now um, to take a moment, because this is extremely important uh, when we study any kind of prayer or blessing. Um, I just make that a little bigger. I just want to show a little bit of a difference. This is from the daily prayer book, uh, Hasidur HaShalem uh, by Birnbaum. How many of you uh, are familiar with the Birnbaum Sidur? Yeah. And I wanted to show this uh, really, um, women, please don't throw anything at me, but this is, this is from our history. Um, so they had men, Oops. saying, blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has not made me a woman. <laughs> uh, and the women would say, blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has made me according to thy will. Now, we could spend the whole night <laughs> arguing with, the, with these lines. But I put it up there to, again as example of the language that was used. Uh, Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who has closeth, closeth the naked. A little archaic English. Um, and um, I just want to say that with the right understanding and kavanah, um, we could say similar words um, like I, I, uh, I often, when I go to a men's retreat, we're very much, we honor our manhood and women should honor their womenhood, womanhood. And so um, we take that language out, although 
honoring ourselves and validating ourselves is a wonderful thing. Now, in the research I've done in defense of Birnbaum, um, they say that uh, that line was meant to, um, or, or separating the men and the women was to um, talk about uh, the difference in the role, the masculine and feminine roles in the community. And we know those have evolved tremendously. So out goes Birnbaum. Um, now, there's been, there's, there's a real transition going on here. And what I'd like to do is while uh, Deborah is looking for number three, I'm going to read us a passage from Reb Zalman's book, because this uh, says it very eloquently. And this also uh, goes to the fact that these blessings uh, might mean something slightly different to each one of us, um, because each one of us is receiving um, a message from God, essentially. And you know, you might hear it a little bit differently than me. It might, it might hit something in your past that brings something alive in you, but not in the next person, and so on. And uh, prayer does that. Um, so Reb Zalman says, uh, and he's talking about the world of Asiya here, because this is where um, the morning blessings fall. And we look at our bodies and our breathing. There's some of the blessings here are meant to get us in touch with our breath work. Um, and we're going to do that after this. We're going to do a little meditating and we'll start with some breath work um, in the meditation. But Reb Zalman says, we need to give our bodies a chance to pray as well. Asiya is the world in which we do the morning blessings, thanking God for all the things that anchor me to this life. Wake up, the soul tells the body, and smell the universe. Take a look at the list of morning blessings in your Siddur, and you will see what I mean. You'll find them in the early morning service. Now, some of his translations are just beautiful. Instead of saying, thanking God for thanking for making us in your image, Reb Zaman says, thank you for making me who I am. I just love that. Thank you for making me who I am. Blessed are you for the solid ground beneath my feet as I get out of bed. Blessed are you for oi, straightening the bent. So here's Reb Zama getting out of bed. Oi, for straightening the bent. So he's waking up and getting out of bed. So. You see what he's doing here? He's uh, he's really making these come alive a little bit more about we're starting the day. The body, you wake up. Blessed are you, giving vision to the blind. How, mu how much sharper the world becomes when I put on my glasses. Blessed are you for clothing the naked. Now that one, you can find that translation in a lot of prayer books. Blessed are you for supplying my every need. And in parentheses, he writes, the rabbis understood this as referring to shoes, reminding us that shoes were once a luxury that not everyone could afford. I didn't know that. Thank you for supplying my every need, putting on the shoes. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> That's uh, Dan's holding up uh, one of the books. Um, well, that's um, that's the book I'm going to use next. Uh, the book that I'm now quoting from is this one. 
<laughs> Are you ready for this? I'm I'm ready to share the screen whenever you're ready. Um, you know. Let me just finish one more thing since I already have this, and then we'll put the screen right up. Asia, Asia is the world of Taklis, the world of the concrete. One morning blessing that is especially emblematic is Asher Yatsar, the God who created, which thanks God for helping our bodies functioning properly. Tradition asks us to say this after emerging from the bathroom. That's what I said before. So I see is the realm of the practical and the sensible, the stuff we apprehend with our senses. We're packing for our spiritual journey here, grounding ourselves in the physical bodies in the here and now. Thank you, Rev Zalman. That, that, that whole bit really speaks to me. You know, I, 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 uh, I'm going to share later on that I often do some of the morning blessings when I wake up like that. And then when I go for a walk or I ride my bike in the morning, I do other ones that when I'm seeing and nature's coming alive. Um, so I put it in that context as well. So um, now we can put up that number three. A little bigger if you can. Now, this is from um, Marsha Prager's Sidur. Um, are any of you familiar with Marsha Prager? Marsha Prager's work? Yeah, um, I want to, um, <laughs> I have all my handouts all over the place here. Try to keep organized. Okay, we're on number three. Um, yeah, Marsha Prager is a poet. Honestly, she really um, takes a whole beautiful rendition of the morning blessings. And I really, I use these a lot. I use these a lot. Um, you, make us, uh, you make us conscious beings. Um, but I really wanted to talk about this. Uh, I, I, you're going to kill me, Deborah. Um, I really want to look at number four. I'm so sorry. I, no, I did want to show this. I wanted to show the Marsha Prager, but the other half of the Marsha Prager book is two parts. So I really want the other page of the Marsha Prager. Yeah, that's the one. And I just want to point out, um, when I first discovered... Uh, it was Benayor that was Reb Zalman's group back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, I, I, I came to it in 1979 when I met Reb Zalman. Um, it was Benayor, Sons of Light. And the, in, in the world and in, in, in Judaism, the, um, the, the, the power in the feminine was really emerging. Um, and we learned that um, the, the, the patriarchy was breaking down. And so translation started coming up in English. Um, the men and the women, we weren't happy with always saying the masculine form. And so we would have uh, either go every other line would say a he or a she, or we would say uh, Abraham Vesara and that kind of thing. Um, and then we changed the name of the whole organization to Penay or Faces of Light so that the whole uh, patriarchy was taken out of it. And the Hebrew then was starting to show up in the feminine form. And that's what I want to show here in terms of the morning blessings. So, um, a lot of people, um, I know that when Rab Rabbi Mark uh, goes around, some of the women in Moshe will use the feminine form of the blessing. So instead of Baruch Atah Havaya Eloheinu Ruach Haolam, 
we can see a couple of other substitutes. Um, which I think is just just wonderful. Now, I, what I'd like to do is uh, get everybody involved a little bit more. So I'd like us to go around the room. If we could take the uh, screen share away for the time being, please. And let's see. I was just reading the chats. Uh, okay, so Stephen is driving and he's listening. Okay, we'll include you. <laughs> Um, I really think it's important for each of us before we dive in the morning blessings um, and we're doing some of that in the evening. So I'd like us to do a go around and in this go around, um, tell us one thing that you're thankful for from today, something that happened today, something that you want to thank God for. So we're not doing it in the morning. We're not doing the gratitude in the morning. Thank you, God, for um, uh, the, for giving us the understanding to know the difference between day and night and for clothing the naked. Now we're going to do for the evening, but we'll get a sense of it and we're going to use our the ones that we share in our I'll say evening blessings, <laughs> but they're going to be for the morning. Um, and so this, the other part of this is, if you're willing, um, share with the group um, something you're, you're, again, you're thankful for. And what is the preferred name that you use when you um, pray to God or you say a blessing uh, in English or Hebrew? Um, so for Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey, do you use the word God? Um, I personally like Havaya, which is translated as pure being, pure being, Havaya. And sometimes Ya, which Arthur Waskow talks about being just an expression of a breath, Ya. And Arthur prays Baruch Ata Ya. You know, it's it's an onomatopoeia. He's really breathing as he's praying. Um, so, um, who'd like to start? Uh, I'll just uh, you know just uh, do the raising hand thing, and I'll call on somebody. Unmute yourself, and then we'll go on to somebody else. Something you're thankful for, your a gratitude, Carolyn. You're muted, Carolyn. Still muted. Okay, how's that? Here you go. Okay, yeah, I've been working with my iPad, which is, I'm still not used to doing Zoom with it. Um, I had um, a major task to accomplish with the Social Security Administration. I'm trying to change banks and have my Social Security check sent to the new bank. And I literally had to go to the offices today out and um, way out New Hampshire Avenue in Maryland. Um, some of you may know of this and, uh, and it was horrendous. I mean, it was packed with people in the lobby and I went home and called them. And for the third time on the phone, they finally processed it for me because they asked me an additional identity question. But it took uh, $5 worth of gas 40 miles around the beltway and uh, or something and but I and three phone calls to get it done but I'm grateful that it got done and uh, it's one less task thank you the right. hey, Carolyn how, how do you address God in your prayers if you wouldn't mind telling us well I, I don't use my name quite frankly I, I never speak about my name maybe I should learn to do that uh, I, I'm I'm talking about God's name. Oh, oh, what you name said, you oh, but how I address God. Oh, yeah, okay. You use the yeah. word God. It's, yeah, it's I, I, when we were doing the, uh, I was, I was uh, reading your, the blessings from the prayer book. I was saying Hashem, but I often say God. Oh God, please. Yeah. Oh God, please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. This is beautiful. Somebody else want to share, Hannah? 
the uh, name I use for God is Anohi. Okay. And I've learned that from uh, Rabbi Wayne Dosick in his book, The Real Name of God. Uh, it just connected with me. And today I'm very grateful for, for several things. First is that a red-shouldered hawk landed in the tree outside my uh, porch about 15 feet away from me, and he was there for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I was able to identify him because he was screaming later on, and um, uh, the name of the app uh, escapes me right now, but it, it listens for uh, the bird sounds and then identifies the bird. Yeah. Is it Merlin? Yes, thank you, Merlin. And it was especially meaningful because today is my 76th birthday of years of experience. So it was, it was a real treat. Are thank you, you. Are you a member of, of Saging International? No, I'm not. Oh, because I, I like the way you use the, the years of experience. I, well, I've taken the saging, aging the saging class. Oh, great. A couple of them, some of them two or three times, so. Wonderful. Dan, what you got? Um, so I'm very thankful that uh, today I was able to go to a funeral um, for uh, a wonderful person, Barry Krasner. Uh, Jewish educator um, in the Was Baltimore, Washington area, uh, also connected to Habonim, the labor Zionist uh, youth movement uh, and kibbutz, um, and um, also part of Zemer Chai, the Jewish uh, choral group. Um, it just, it, it helped me um, connect to the past, the present and then the future in terms of Jewish education. Um, and um, it also helped me, uh, well, it also helped me deal with the issue of envy. Um, he was such an incredible person doing everything for everybody for years uh, that uh, I sometimes say, well, what the hell am I doing? I'm a schlub, you know? And so dealing with that, in terms of um, the feeling, but also the motivation. So I was very thankful um, to be able to connect with the funeral, uh, see some people I hadn't seen in a while, but also uh, his, his story. Um, I'm very grateful that really put me into a, uh, um, in, a intentional mindset. Um, as to um, my, the, the name I use for God, I still struggle with that, um, as some of you know. Um, I, uh, too many of the names have baggage, uh, and um, I, I, I um, have too much of, a, of an issue with um, me relating to what? Uh, a being? Um, uh, you know, whether anthropomorphic or not, um, uh, or an energy or a force or life, um, just life, which relates to what you were saying, Havaya, in terms of being. Um, uh, I'm coming around more to that and evolution, um, that uh, the world and its energy are evolving. Uh, and that's the energy uh, which I... Um, I, I, I can latch on to that. I can believe in that. It's hopeful. It's, it's got a direction. Uh, it's got an energy and um, it's got a life. So, uh, but I don't have a term. Okay. Thank you. Dibarti. Shamati. Mary Rita and then Deborah. Uh, so my name for God uh, is that I that I pray um, when I'm praying in community Shahina when I'm praying personally I call her Mama Shahina ah. uh, because that was the mama came when doing 
uh, a meditation with my cohort of people who are being trained as Jewish spiritual directors. So she's Mama Shahina. I, and I'm grateful when I, the sun was out this morning when I walked into the room where I pray and study. And at that time of morning, the way the light comes in, it, 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 there are some, there's an object that, that is, acts like a prism and there's, there's usually a rainbow. And I see the rainbow and I say, thank you. Good morning, Mama Shahina. And there's that sense of like the welcoming of, of being awake. I'm also grateful today um, just for all that we have. You know, we have a home that is cool, you know, and so many people don't, you know, in this really hot weather. And, you know, we had a nice dinner tonight before we jumped onto this. And we have this opportunity to be with this community tonight and to learn. Um, so I am grateful for all that. And um, I would say, Bruha at ya, you know, Ruach, Ruach Halom, Shahina, thank you. Um, and um, yeah, Dabarti. Shamati. <laughs> Deborah. Oh, I have, I have, since I was quite young, had conversations with God. And so the, I still use the same word, the same name, uh, but my perception and my understanding of the being that I'm praying to is, has evolved a lot in a lot of years. And the thing that I am so grateful to for today um, in the class that we did with, about blessings, I think it was, I don't think it was last week. I think it was two weeks ago. I can't remember. Um, I ended that class asking a question because there was something about blessings that I did not understand. And I'm relatively new to renewal, just a few years, um, having come from a reform. I'd been in uh, Orthodox and conservative and mostly reform though. And there was something that was bugging me and no one was understanding. I was asking and asking. And today I had a really intense conversation and I got it finally. <laughs> so now I can put that to rest. <laughs> so I'm really grateful for that. Yasher Kovach. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Stephen and Nadine. Hi. Um, I, I, when I pray to God, I, I use two, two once one is when I'm doing it by myself and it's not like brachas or, um, uh, praying in synagogue or something. I just use the word God and just straight up God, that's it. But when I'm praying, I've always used the Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam as that's the way I was brought up. I haven't heard it any other way till joining Moshe. And yet when, when that's being said in the, by Mark or whoever's leading, that's what I follow with is whatever's being said. I go with the flow. But personally, that's how I've always prayed to God. Um, for today, I, I, I'm actually thankful for two things. Um, one was I got a message from my bone marrow transplant doctor on my portal responding to a question I sent yesterday that I can fly uh, somewhere if I want, uh, which is was good to hear because um, that's all I used to do. <laughs> and I've been grounded for through, uh, almost well two two plus years now. So, uh, and so that's uh, that that was nice. You know, there's things I have to be careful of, but other than that, yeah, that that permission was great to hear. the 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 other thing which was planned was I. Um, went golfing for the first time in over three years today. And so I, if I was still in the golf course, I would have said I was driving as well, but uh, uh, the, the pun definitely intended, but uh, uh, 
that was fun to be out with uh, my cousin and 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 uh, enjoying being out in a beautiful golf course that was very green and lush and lots of trees and everything. I tried to avoid the trees and uh, and it was fun just to be out on a beautiful day uh, and swinging the clubs instead of just watching the PGA on TV. Thank you. So, uh, Debarti. Shamati. Uh, Nadine, before you go, I just want to say uh, something that Stephen said that was important. Uh, for many years, I didn't use Adonai because the direct translation is Lord. I didn't see God as a, as a, a Lord. That was not my uh, vision of a God. Um, and so I didn't use it. And I've come full circle. And the reason is uh, tradition. That's how my father said it. That's how my grandfather, that's how my great-great-grandmother used it. You know, I don't know. And so it helps me connect with my ancestry. So uh, I do the editing internally. I don't see a Lord, but I don't know. It's okay. Nadine. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. That's very insightful. Um, today I spent a great deal of the day uh, writing a uh, uh, proposed Torah service, not Torah, Shabbat service. And um, so I spent a great deal of the day writing. When I write, uh, I use different terms depending on the message that I'm trying to convey with the prayer. I might use hamakom if I want to convey God is in this place. I might use a father of motherly love if I want this gender uh, identity to be both male and fam female. I do use Adonai. I sometimes use yud hey vav hey. Uh, ruach uh, is sometimes what I use. But when I pray, when I'm praying, not writing, you know, I, it was an interesting question that you asked, and I realized for the first time, I don't use uh, an address name, you know? I just pray. I pray like, like Deborah was saying, I'm having a conversation. So when I talk to my husband, I don't start every sentence with his first name. And when I'm talking to God, I just talk to God. And that's what my prayers are. Uh, today, in the, in the process of um, writing prayers, I thought about a meditation where we focus on our breath. And then my thoughts tra trailed off a little bit. And I thought about the fact that, of course, when we breathe, we are bringing oxygen into our body and it's transferred to our lungs. And then the lungs send it out to the blood vessels and the blood vessels take it everywhere take the breath everywhere in our body, every cell. And then I thought to myself, I wonder how many cells there are in the human body. And so did some calculations. Then I looked it up on Rabbi Google. And you know, there are 37 trillion cells in the human body. And so if only we can take a breath in and take in that light of God, and realize it's going through us into 37 trillion cells in our body. And then when we exhale, we can send it out again. Wow, that was really a lovely prayer for me. That's a perspective. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that, <laughs> at least. Thank you. Marty. Shamati, Roxanne and Gail. That was beautiful. Thank you, Eliana. I'll, I'll be thinking about that. Um, just like imagining trillions just calling out to God and appreciating God. It's just wonderful. Um, names for God. I, one of my very favorite is Rachamim because of, of it coming from Rechem, the womb. So that one is uh, has always really stuck with me. If I need a bigger name uh, because I want sort of God to take notice of the whole world. It's Ruach HaOlam. Um, but I don't mind God. 
like sometimes if you really want God to pay attention, I do those like Tevya talks with God. Like, would it be so bad if you could fix this? Like that kind of a thing. And I just say, God, like, God, look over here, <laughs> you know? Um, and I am grateful because today I gave my husband the go ahead to um, make reservations for us to go to Austria. And the reason that's, I'm, I'm very grateful for that because that took a lot of courage and a lot of calm for me to overcome. I'm not a great traveler anyway, but then with COVID and all of that, I get very frightened. And um, it's very important to my husband because he was just given back the citizenship to Austria that was stripped from his father by the Nazis. Oh, wow. And he was welcomed, you know, beautiful letters from the um, Austrian Jewish community and from the Austrian government itself. So it's very important to him to go and to show that it meant something to him, it, it, you know, instead of just going, yeah, fine, I got my Austrian citizenship. Mm -hmm. So it was so important to him. So I had to overcome things in myself. So I'm grateful for the love of him that made me overcome the fears and mm -hmm uncomfortableness that I have. Gail. Yes, so I um, usually, because of my interfaith background and unity background, I use Father Mother God a lot uh, when I'm in prayer. Um, also Abba Amma. Um, and then if I'm in a more public setting, I would use holy one, because that feels uh, that it honors many faith traditions. Um, and so what I'm grateful for today is certainly, well, my Emmett and Tilly um, had their checkup at the vets yesterday and some results came back today and they were pretty good. My little Tilly's an older lady and, uh, but she's still doing okay. Um, so very grateful for that. And um, was in a two hour um, compassionate listening session that was really powerful today and uh, really had me reflecting the rest of the day about some of the things I uncovered. So, Debarti. Shamati. Does anyone else want to share? Everybody shared who wanted to? All right, what I'd like to do now is I learned a choreography from Reb Zalman himself uh, for the morning blessings that I'd like to teach. Some of you, I, I, ever since I've joined Mo Moish, I, I, I use it every Shabbat uh, because it, it just uh, means a lot to me. Uh, we're going to learn it tonight, and then next week we're going to take that choreography. We're going to learn the chorus to it. And we're each going to bring our own verse from what we're grateful for uh, next time. So the choreography, I'm going to demonstrate. And then um, if you would like to stand with me to learn this, um, that would be great. If not, you can learn it where you are. But it starts with your hands on your heart. And uh, we'll use this. Baruch Atah would be a knee bend and a bow. Baruch Atah Havaya. And then it would be uh, Eloheinu Ruach HaOlam would be a sweeping of the world. Eloheinu Ruach HaOlam. And then we would invent, depending on the blessing, um, the rest of it. So the best, for example, would be um, Baruch Atah Havaya Eloheinu Ruach HaOlam You open the eyes of the blind, which is, a, is a, a, an old way. I like much better to say, uh, thank you for giving us vision. And it is my custom 
to go through all five senses. So uh, even when I'm using that when I'm riding my bicycle and not doing the choreography, I, you know, I, for what I'm seeing, then I hear the birds and I'm thanking God for my hearing. And then I smell some flowers. I'm thanking God for the smells and uh, the wind in my face. I'm thanking God for touch. Um, so uh, let's do that all together. Baruch atah havaya Eloheinu ruach haolam. Now, what I'd like us to do is this. Think about what you just shared. The thing you just shared that you are really thanking God for. And I'd like us to practice the kavanah. So as we're doing the movements and as we're doing um, uh, the, the words, use the word for God that you prefer. So I used Habaya. You use Hebrew or English, the words that you like. And then just take a moment, maybe close your eyes really contemplate what you're thankful for and then make your own movement that depicts that. So I'll give an example. Um, I already said that I use Havaya. So when I do this, I am going to be, um, I'm, I'm very, very uh, thankful for the, um, my morning walk, all right? And I haven't been able to walk too good lately and I was able to go for a nice walk. So mine would look like, Baruch atah havaya Eloheinu ruach halam. I thank you, God, for my walking. This morning, you can't see my legs. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm actually marching in place. Um, I, I would I would move back, but my dog decided that she is going to lie down right behind my chair right now and not let me get back there. So just take a moment and um, just do that for yourself with your own blessing. See, the body wants to dive into. Um, so next time, what we're going to do is we are going to go through each of the morning blessings. And we're going to talk about, everyone will get a turn to say, wow, what does that blessing really mean to me? And then we'll look at some of the metaphor, metaphoric to the blessing. We'll look at some of the mystical that a lot of us, um, may not have ever considered um, some of the interpretations, some of the words behind the words. Uh, and then what we're, we'll do is we'll each have a chance to uh, pick some of those blessings and we'll go through and together we will all do the choreography and then each one of you will teach a movement for it. So if you happen to get clothed the naked, you take a few moments and you say, hmm, what's a nice movement for that? And you'll teach us and then we'll all do the blessing together. And that's how I learned it from Reb Zalman. We were in a circle and he went around and he said, um, you know, Mark, you do clothe the naked. And I'd have to think and I'd come up with a movement Everyone would learn the movement with me, and then we would do it together. And then he would choose the next person. We'd go around the circle and teach each other some beautiful movements for the blessing. So that's coming for next week. Um, 
I can't believe that it's already like seven after eight. We have a few more minutes. Uh, I wanted to do um, a meditation. Um, but you know what? I'm going to do a different meditation just so that we could all um, leave on a very, very relaxed note. So find yourself a comfortable position. Close your eyes if you desire. And as all meditations, we're going to begin by focusing on our breath. And as you inhale, just feel your body relaxing. Drop your shoulders into the chair. Feel a relaxation going down your legs into your feet. When you inhale, see if you can make your jaw relax. Open your mouth, your lips slightly, and just let your jaw relax. We hold a lot of tension in our face. As your body relaxes, quiet down your emotions. Your mind becomes still. You resonate with the inflow and the exflow of your breath. Feel the rhythm of your body mind, your spirit, all in one. Know that you're breathing with all of us here tonight in this meditation, Zoom thing, and you're bound by a Thread of consciousness. And begin to resonate with your surroundings, the things in the room, the things outside, the wind, the trees, the animals. Know that all of life is in tune with your breathing in and breathing out. We're in tune with the inhalation and the exhalation of all of life. your attention to your heart space. That's where your heart chakra is and breathe into your heart chakra in Jewish language. You're breathing into the sphere of, of Tiferet, beauty. And as you breathe in, feel your own internal beauty come alive. And get in touch with your inner Ruach Elohim, your own life force.
just take a moment to think of some of the things in life that you're grateful for. Inhale those into your heart. Nothing the matter with being grateful for things. Pick out a special person when you inhale. Bring that special person into your heart. of something special in nature. And inhale the energy of that into your heart. And think of your concept of the divine energy. Bring that divine, supernal God energy into your heart. Now we'll take a deep breath and we'll concentrate on exhaling. So from your heart space, when you exhale, Send that loving energy out to the world. Send that beauty out to the world. Send that God healing out to the world. Send God's hope out to the world. Exhale, send God's light out to the world. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes, look around our Zoom chapel. It is 8.15. I've already mentioned some of the things that we're going to do next week, but I want to say that we're also going to learn a little Kabbalah because in order to understand some of the mystical elements of the morning blessings, you need to have a rudimentary understanding of the tree of life anyway basic, the, the Kabbalistic tree of life. Tonight we focused on Tiferet. And next week we're going to start with being made in God's image and what that means to you. And then we're going to look at what that means in terms of the Kabbalistic tree of life and the Sefirot and how we're made in God's image. And we'll connect that with the morning blessings. So have a wonderful evening. Um, I'll see you all on Shabbat. And uh, thank you, Deborah. Um, we'll be using some of the, uh, the other um, things that we didn't get to the other uh, uh, screen shares next time.